Well, this is kind of a rarity, actually. A blank canvas. Um, so we've got everything, we hope, uh, ready for Adepticon 2024. And uh, we've now uh, wrapped up all the scenarios, which means all four games on one table at once. Um, <clears throat> and now we've cleaned the table, except for the mouse, um, which I'll just put down there. If it still works, does it still have the range? Yeah, it does. All right. So there you are. Uh, now, so uh, one of the questions that we had was uh, in the Ancients game, we were thinking about, you know, how do we, sh should we have any elevations at all? Should it just be flat? And, and through that test that we did, uh, it came out pretty good. I mean, it, it looks like both sides have a chance. No, uh, even though the Carthaginians have those two elephants, it looks like, you know, uh, they, um, actually, now that I think about it, I think I might take one or two of the Carthaginian phalanx away because the Romans have no equivalent of the elephants or the uh, phalanx. So, is the phalanx overrated? Eh. Uh, not from reports, but uh, possibly. Maybe we're letting him uh, behave too much like a Greek phalanx with Sarisa, in which they did not have. They were a spear phalanx. Well, I think we'll think about it. But um, I certainly, uh, they have four Carthaginian phalanx uh, uh, cohorts now. So it's almost a legion of, of, uh, of men. So I'm thinking I might just take two away. Maybe I'll, I'll take two away and leave him as an option, <clears throat> you know, as a arriving or random event or something. Uh, this gives the Romans at least a better chance uh, because they're going to have to fight those elephants somehow. Or maybe I say the cavalry uh, doesn't run away from the smell of the elephants, right? Maybe I'll just say, eh. In this case, you know, okay. Anyway, so you get the idea. So what are we doing? Uh, we don't know. We have a blank 4x3 uh, uh, game table. And uh, is everything working? Yeah, okay. Um, so not sure. I know I'm looking at some hills on the background. Uh, I'm wondering if we could put them out there. I just painted them up. They are from the one inch thick, I'm sorry, half inch thick foam. How is that different? Because it's very hard to obtain big sheets of foam. And I'm not talking about styrofoam. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, railroad hobby foam, high density foam. I'm talking about squishy foamies. EVA foam. Why? Uh, because it doesn't fall apart. That's the reason. And uh, it's harder to cut, but it doesn't fall apart. And it's half inch thick. So I'm going to show, I hope, uh, I'll grab some and put them out here and see what, they're only available in 9 by 12 I think 9 by 12 uh, So your heels can't be, unless you put two pieces together, but then you see the seam, yada, yada, yada. I don't know, maybe, uh, but you'll, you'll get the idea. And by the way, that brings up a question. I remember there was a, well, there was a time uh, when, when we discovered large uh, sheets of foamies. I think they were nine by, no, they, they were, they were, they were 12 by 18 big and quarter inch thick not six millimeter or i'm sorry not the two millimeter these were the six millimeter thick uh yeah i think i think that's almost right i think almost like quarter inch thick uh and 18 inches i think so anyway but the point is that enabled us to create a contour uh situation We were able to create a large enough 
contour uh, elevation in one corner of the board. And then another piece on top, a piece on top, and a piece on top. So it got to be one inch tall. But that enabled us to have the illusion of a more realistic elevation in one portion of the game table. And then another portion would have, uh, you know, another series. It's, in other words, it was like the beginning of a ridge. But because of the size of the foamies, you could only put it in the corner. You couldn't put it in the middle of the table. I mean, you could. Um, but it just looks better at the edges. And so as if you're coming into this little valley down these hills. But in this case, so let me show you these nice thick uh, foamies that I think they're used in the, in the shoe foam industry. And yes, granted, some of these are, in fact, the very foam we were uh, saying uh the normal styrofoam some of these are because we resurrected them and painted them um, so this is the normal foam this is the thick one inch or half inch thick foamies uh, and there's the the resident color is brown but i painted it tan after priming it white so that's why it looks the way it does right so you get the idea you put a couple of these things together and you've got a one inch tall hill. And in this case, one inch tall hill and another strip on top of it. So you see that's not too bad. And you see that there's no easy way to cut this because of its high density. Even though it's squishy, it's very high density, it doesn't cut very well. You cannot cut it with a hot knife. So I had to use an X-Acto, sharp blade, and very careful, by the way, in order to get this to be like this, okay? So step pyramidal, but still a, a realistic, generic, square hill. I probably, and to take, and I would probably take this little piece off, but this little piece is by itself kind of cool. It's half inch thick. So there's the hill. And here's the other one. So I got two of these, and you could say they're identical, like you know, big round top, little round top. Okay, so but they're essentially that's what they are. Um, and then I got these guys, and I think I don't know if these go together. Maybe they do. No, these don't. So these two guys don't. And you can see this is the old way that we did the hexagon. We actually carved it in the top because it's styrofoam. Uh, we just used a, a hardened pen uh, pencil tip and then scored right into the, the foam so that's why that looks that, like that um, and this one we've painted it over so you can't see that there's no hexagon on it and besides that's a pretty small uh, ridge so the hexagon in this case you'd want the hexagons to be like that um, okay, and this one you can barely see the hexes because again we painted over it after scoring it, and that's why these are the older the older version. So anyway, when you take and by the way, this is the styrofoam that's half inch thick. Uh, oh, here's that one inch. That's half inch. That's one inch. This is the one inch thick foam. Um, we we tried this years ago, uh, but again, it's because it's hard. It's kind of brittle around the edges, and you can see after time. Uh, it's going to start to get chipped. But at any rate, at least it comes in bigger she uh, sheets. Okay, so there's a nice big tall hill. And that's usable. There's no reason why you can't use that. But it's also a, a, a pretty large ridge. So even if we put that out there, um, and here's my point. Yeah, we could put this little guy right there like that. Um... Even if you put out a big ridge like this guy, that, that forget about the real estate that it occupies. It's ginormous, right? This is equivalent to Missionary Ridge, which is not that ginormous by all reports. I mean, I haven't been there yet, uh, fortunately, but I do understand that it's not as big as people think. Missionary Ridge, Chattanooga, um, I think they said it was only like 100 feet at any rate. Uh, I will find out. But 
um, this is really huge. And I know there's been some scenes in the, the HBO series Rome where some battles show a large, a large ridge at one point uh, with two main character generals on it and then moving down to face the Romans, uh, the other Romans. Um, uh, Cassius, I believe, and I forget. Brutus? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's a large ridge. It's not really long, but again, this here, herein lies that explanation or the question about being able to make elevations that are bigger. Uh, and how do you do that? Well, it, unfortunately, the only way to make big elevations is to get one inch thick, um, railroad hobby, high density foam. And the reason I say it like that is because I don't remember the name. It's not lifelike. It might be lifelike. Uh, it might be, but I forget. So one inch thick, and then you have to paint it, and then you have to put the top graphic on it, which is the hexagon grid. You have to draw that on there. So that has to be done. Now, again, this might be something we'll do in the future, but right now we've got a lot of these little hills. But having a big sheet like that, uh, would enable you to create an elevation that spans the entire board. Say you took a couple of those sheets, one inch thick, and what you did is instead of uh, carving them into the shape of hills, you intended to put them on the table, cover the table with a one inch thick foam, and then cut into the foam the river. So that what you're looking at is a one inch thick you know, foam table, but uh, it's an illusion because you don't see the foam. You assume that it almost looks like it's just a table, right? It looks like, you know, a board, but it's one inch thick foam and you've cut into it the, the river. So what this does is it creates a realistic riverbank. Now, uh, as you will know, some riverbanks or some rivers, creeks, and so on are at grade. In other words, they're the same elevation as the land you're standing on. Okay, um, they just simply it turns into water, right? There's a because there's a creek there. There's no big divot uh, leading down to the creek. It's just at the same level. It becomes a creek. Well, of course, it's deep. It could be deep, right? But it's it's like a pond except it's long, <laughs> all right? But it's just at the same grade. So there's your creek at the same grade. And then you'll have creeks that will be at the bottom of a short valley. Like you'll have the elevation up here. It just looks like an elevation because then the slopes go down and then there's some small bit of land before the creek is there. And then take this and extrapolate it further. So now you move these hills way out. And so here are the, now here's the ridges. Now they're ridges. They're, they're hills, but they're ridges because you can't see the end of them. You know, it's just one big long elevation. So then there are slopes come down. Then there's the valley itself of flat ground. And then there's the creek. So that's the elevation. That's the illusion that you're trying to create. Two things. You cut into the game table, this river. And for that, you can use a hot knife. You draw where you want it to be. And then take your hot knife and carve out, uh, well, I understand, <clears throat> yes, just a second. I understand that the, the hot knives are not big enough to be able to get into a piece that big. Although you can make huge wands that you hold with two hands and they've got that hot filament in there. You can make those. Uh, but otherwise, you end up kind of probably having to cut it with an X-Acto blade. But again, a sharp one. Uh, or if you can manufacture, if you can come up with a hot knife, that it's a blade, uh, it's not just a wand, but maybe the wand will work. I don't know. I haven't tried this. Uh, they do make them. Uh, the hot knife company makes a wand, which is a handle with a big stick on it that you plug in, and that whole stick of metal is a hot surface that you can use to carve through styrofoam. Okay, so there we are. We'll come back. Um, this is what we're determining what to do. If we were to put these elevations, just like we see them now, right? If we put them on the game table, what do you get? 
what you get is this big gap in here and you get this and you get this dead zone here you see nothing what's going to happen there no nothing right unless this is so impassable this now becomes really valuable well most of the time that doesn't happen so what you do is you have to kind of move the hill right so move the hill to the edge and now it means something well what happens here well that's an entry point that's why you need to leave a gap there and so this big elevation is back here right the focal point of probably the defender or the attackers thing should it be there well kind of look where it is it's not really in the middle of the table and it's not in the end it's kind of like you know undecided and then you got this dead zone back here but again that's an entry zone or a pile up a, a, a lineup area a staging area so again the question why don't you just put it right in the middle and have the combat for the hill well there's a lot of possibilities that may not work and then there's the shape of this uh why not just turn it so it becomes a little less obvious so you turn it oh now interesting right hmm and then how about turn this so you're hopscotching right now it takes on a whole new kind of perspective so that's interesting so just by turning these and then look here's another look at this right what's here that's kind of a dead again dead so move the hill to the edge and then kind of maybe in the middle so that's kind of cool and then in this kind of orientation we don't know which way the game's going to be played diagonals so uh, end to end or side to side we don't know anyway so that's it we'll come back um uh and we still know we still don't know what kind of era we're playing maybe we'll just throw another ancients thing out there because it's low you know low impact there's not a lot of trees no roads right uh so you know that's maybe what we'll do